Welcome Clearly Essential team to our monthly webinar. This is the webinar that we are recording for May 2017, but I know the information here is going to be timeless and also extremely valuable. So I'm really excited about this particular recording that we're doing. And I am here with a few wellness advocate friends from our team. We've got um, Lizzie, Susanna, and Lori all standing by and they're going to introduce themselves. But our topic today, as you can see, is sharing doTERRA with medical professionals. And I know it's a hot topic. It's something we get a lot of questions about. And doTERRA has let us know at leadership retreats and um, other conferences that they are getting ready to really break into the medical field. They already have in many ways, and you'll learn about that. But they're going to be working with more and more medical professionals. And really, that's part of their mission that they haven't completely fulfilled yet. We've really taken care of getting them into homes and families and educating people and having the purest quality oils available. But it is time to bridge that gap even more so with the medical community. And so this is great timing. I'm super thankful to Lizzie for putting this presentation together mm -hmm. and to all of the ladies just for being available to offer their perspective and experience um, with this. So without further ado, we will get started and I will have Lizzie just introduce herself and share um, how this came about. Well, good morning. Um, I'm glad to be here with you today. My name is Lizzie, as Crystal said. Um, I'm really excited about uh, sharing this topic with you. Um, earlier this year, my upline, uh, Kelly, she asked me to challenge myself and um, do something that I wasn't ready to do, something that was going to be a challenge for me. So um, that's how this presentation came together. I really have a passion for the healthcare field. I always tell people I'm a nurse by training and a wellness advocate and an educator about natural health and wellness by choice. Um, so that's kind of who I am. I have a background in critical care um, and cardiovascular medicine. I've been working critical care, um, cardiovascular recovery for about six years, a little more. Um, so that's kind of where my background and training lies. Um, and I just really have a desire to educate not only healthcare professionals, but um, everybody about the science behind these oils. So that's a little bit about me and how this came together. So I'm excited to be here with you today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And <clears throat> next we have Susanna. See if you will introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Susanna Underwood, and I have been sharing with the medical professional for quite a few years. Um, coming from the medical professional myself, it was um, it was kind of an easy thing for me to do. Some people are very intimidated, but one line I want to tell you that I say almost every time when I, before I talk to someone in, in that profession is I am going in to talk about something that I know about, not trying to tell them their business and what they know about, which is totally different. So if you can think about it that way and think, I'm not going in there to tell them their stuff and tell them how to have open heart surgery. I'm telling them how to use an oil that I use every single day of the week. So explaining it that way and thinking of it that way definitely gives, I think, a little bit less anxiety about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's kind of how I approach it. I also, um, I was a nurse for many years on the cardiovas cardiovascular floor and I got out of it for reasons that I'm teaching them about. So I'm wanting to understand them, let them see that they don't have to constantly do things in a nature that is synthetic. They can do something prior to that preventative type things that we have to offer. And if they can do those instead of, or in place of our complementary, then that would be, that's all I'm trying to give them the hope of. And a lot of times they're immediately understanding of that, especially when you say, I've been in the shoes, um, even if you're talking just to a nurse or if you're talking to a doctor, whatever, I've been in those shoes. I know how um, it can be. And if you think that there is an option, if you can slide something in by talking about natural, then slide it in. This is your great option. Um, so to me, it was just an easy thing to do. Again, I understand it's very sometimes, even though it's on my team, I, they're like, how do you talk to doctors? It's so intimidating. Um, 
But again, remember, you're talking about what you know, not what they know. So don't try to meet, put the world in there. Don't think you have to have all the medical stuff. Um, it's just those kind of things. So um, I love doing cold calls and walking in and just unannounced and handing my card and say, hey, if you've got any questions, I'm sure you've heard about it unless you live under a rock. Essential oils are amazing. And, and so here you go. So those are great. And in and out, drop off your stuff and leave if you've got that. If not, then make an appointment and, you know, talk down, sit, sit, sit with them, bring them, do a lunch and learn or something. So those are the things that um, I love to do and I love sharing with them. Wonderful. Thank you for those tips. And I know you've got more tips to share with us and she didn't mention it, but Susanna is actually a doctor now. She's a naturopathic doctor as well and has her own practice in the Nashville, Tennessee area. So that's a pretty new development and we're really excited for her um, and all that that means for how she's helping change lives. So thank you for being here and taking time to do this with us. And then we also have Lori. So Lori, introduce yourself if you don't mind. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for welcoming me into your home. Um, so my name is Lori Bourgeois. I'm a sober wellness advocate with doTERRA. I've been a nurse for almost 25 years. Um, I actually started out um, in emergency medicine and then transferred about 17 years ago into a surgical facility. Uh, I did pre and post ed nursing there. Um, so I guess what changed my life was my own illness, which happened about 14 years ago. Um, and then about eight years ago, I had a vaccine injury. Um, I had to really dive into my health because the traditional community um, didn't have any answers for me. So um, I dug until I found a functional medicine doctor who basically um, meshes traditional medicine and natural um, healthcare together, and we were able to find out what was wrong with me. Um, before I started doTERRA, I was put on a regimen of supplementation, which in the medical community, we never learned about um, as a nurse. Um, it was kind of looked on as like a joke. And uh, I can truthfully tell you that supplements saved my life along with diet. So, um, in February of 2015, I left my job of 17 years, and now I travel around mostly uh, to libraries, which I like to teach at. Um, I believe my medical background makes it possible for me to get into those facilities because I go in with the attitude that I'm teaching about health and wellness, as well as essential oil usage. Um, so it takes me a little longer to reach people because I'm not able to do anything salesy there so I usually have to follow up afterwards but I feel like I'm getting in contact with people I would never have been able to contact before. Um, as far as getting into the oils for me, as I said I started with supplementation uh, prior to finding doTERRA and a nurse friend of mine who was also ill around the same time actually introduced me to the oils um, because I had to start using products that were non-toxic because my body cannot detox. So that's how I got into the oils and that was in November of 2014. And then, as I said, I left in February 2015 and my goal is to reach every single person out there that doesn't feel like they have anybody that will listen to them or that will help to guide them. Um, truthfully, I don't care if people are with doTERRA or not. I want them just to get the information they need um, so I have a lot of people who have started out on other companies or other teams um, with different companies and who, who have switched to mine because I guess they feel that not only do I have the medical professional background, but to me that doesn't mean anything. Um, I know a lot of people think it does, but there's so many people in our company that have no medical background and I'm in awe of the information that I can get from them. So um, I'm excited to hear um, what we're going to talk about the rest of this time. So I'll turn it back over to Crystal. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And thanks for pointing that out too. I never want anyone to feel like they need this medical background to share. You do not. I don't have it. So I just get to be here. I'm fortunate to facilitate and sit back and enjoy the conversation with the rest of you. Um, but you do not need that background to go and share this hope with others. 
um, this is why we're doing this to help you get a little bit more knowledge and I hope more confident as well so that you do realize that you can do this without that type of background. So I'm going to sit back and enjoy this and I'm gonna turn it over to Lizzie who has created the presentation. We'll have some um, comments and feedback from the others throughout and we'll have some more information to share after the actual PowerPoint presentation too. So um, I'm going to actually minimize our videos so that we can see all of Lizzie's screen. And Lizzie, I will let you take it away. Wonderful. Okay, so um, sharing doTERRA with medical professionals. So I just want to echo exactly what Suzanne um, and Lori and Crystal all said that uh, this seems like an overwhelming and intimidating task. Um, medical professionals know their job, um, that is their job, is to be thoroughly educated and well-versed in uh, the field of medicine, but natural medicine is different than modern medicine. Um, so what you have to share is incredibly valuable. Um, so we're gonna talk through um, five major topics. We'll highlight those in just a minute. Um, and then in here, um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my team. I started building um, just very recently, but I'm blessed to have about a quarter of the people on my team as medical professionals. Um, and they range anywhere from dental hygienists to nurses, to nurse practitioners, to doctors' wives um, and doctors. So I've got a very large variety. Um, and to start, I just wanted to um, show you all a little bit about what they are saying. Um, are some of the reasons that they were hesitant about essential oils and then some of the reasons that they got into essential oils. Um, so this first screen is one of the questions that I asked before we started. Um, I said to, and I texted this out to my medical professional friends, I said, before you started using essential oils, what hesitation did you have slash what were you skeptical about regarding these oils? Um, and I want you to take this as an encouragement um, because what you're doing is incredibly important and it, um, it's changing the lives of people. So these are some of their answers that they said. They said, um, one of the common answers I heard was this is just a kick that people jump on board with, just like the rest. There are lots of fads out there. Um, but truly, I think if you are to ask any medical professional, um, what the trend in healthcare is right now, they would say that the trend is towards healthcare prevention. So there's a big push in being well at home in taking care of yourself so that we don't get to the point where you're hospitalized and you need these um, modern medicine interventions. So this is a big thing um, that the healthcare is trending this way. Um, and so I think the medical professional world is going to see that this is not just um, a kick that people are jumping on because it isn't fading out and it's becoming more popular. Um, another big thing that people said they were skeptical about was that they were too expensive. Um, and this is uh, an interesting one because as you all know and probably already educate during your classes, um, the cost is really pennies per drop. Uh, it's very inexpensive to use these oils, so keep doing what you're doing in educating about the benefit of these incredible oils and that truly the benefit with health and prevention is so much less expensive than some of these modern treatments that we're doing. Um, another big response I got was that there is not enough research to back up the use for these oils. Well, um, we all know that's not true. doTERRA is so so invested in research and sharing um, with the, the world that there is research that proves what we already know is that these oils work. Um, the oils are just a placebo effect. Um, let me tell you how you can combat that one. Share some samples. Um, and then the last and most common answer I got was that I didn't know about them. Um, and so, I think people have often heard that there are oils, but have dismissed it. So um, my encouragement to you is to keep sharing. You're sharing, you're making a difference. Um, every drop that you share 
is somebody else that has learned that essential oils are a thing. So um, keep it up. All right, so incorporating the science of essential oils into your classes. Um, I love what Suzanne said. Um, we don't have to try to be a doctor um, to help doctors learn about essential oils. Uh, the, what we're going to be doing in this presentation is really hitting five of the topics that I hear wellness advocates say they're very intimidated about when it comes to sharing. Um, so we're going to be going over these five topics. It's just a brief um, overview and we're going to have an opportunity for these other ladies to um, share as well when we finish each of these. So we're just going to start with um, GCMS reports and doTERRA's quality of oil. So we're going to start there um, and talk through these. Okay, so making sense of GCMS reports. Um, this is super intimidating um, if you have never seen a gas chromatography mass spectrometry report. Um, so it looks very complicated, and it is, but it's not actually um, that hard to understand. Uh, so this type of testing, this gas chromatography mass spectrometry analysis, is just one of the many ways that doTERRA uses to test the purity and potency of their oils. Um, so on the right side of your screen is a GCMS report of Melaleuca um, tea tree oil. And this is actually one I did a couple of days ago. I flipped over my bottle of tea tree oil and I entered the lot number on the source to you website. And we're gonna talk a little more about that in a minute. Um, and this is the report I came up with. Um, so just a little visual for you there. Um, okay, so what happens during GCMS testing? Um, so an oil is tested using GCMS. Um, when they use that type of analysis, the individual chemical constitutes of the oil are compared to the standard of that same pure quality essential oils chemical makeup. So there is a standard as to what essential oils chemical makeup should look like. There's a different one for each oil because each oil is different. So oregano looks different from um, clove and lavender looks different from um, frankincense. So there's a standard as to what a pure essential oil looks like. So with these GCMS testing, what happens is doTERRA takes the oil and they use this testing method um, and they make sure that the chemical composition of the oil that they're testing matches that same standard of what an oil is supposed to look like. Um, they do this to assure the therapeutic effects of these oils um, and uh, that we are going to get the benefits out of them that we are using them for. Um, here are some resources, and I tried to put together resources that are going to be very easily accessible to you at home. Um, so a lot of these are websites. Most of them are from doTERRA um, or other online sources um, from doTERRA. Um, so we're just going to talk about some of these. Uh, the first website that you see listed there is a link to an article from a doTERRA site that talks about GCMS, um, and it has an awesome video embedded in it that gives a visual demonstration of what GCMS analysis is. So you don't have to be the one that explains this complicated chemical testing. You could just point them towards a website. Um, and even for ourselves, I've watched that video a couple of times. Um, it's a wonderful resource just to be able to understand a little more about it. Um, the second one is a video showing the actual testing of the oils um, in the lab at doTERRA. Um, so that's a great one. One of the scientists talks about GCMS. Um, and then the last one is the source to you website. Um, so this is a wonderful thing to be able to do with um, customers to be able to do with your own um, wholesale um, members. I love to take a bottle of their oil when I do a membership overview and say, you know, let's look up um, the report for this. Let's look at the quality of your essential oil. So what you can do on the source to you website is actually go and enter the lot number um, for any single oil and it pops up with a GCMS report that tells the levels and the amounts of the 
different chemical constitutes in that oil. So it's a really cool thing to be able to share and for people to see that these oils are such a high and such a good quality. They match what is the standard for purity. Um, so that's what I have about GCMS. Um, Lori, Suzanne, do you have anything to add there? Yes, I do. <laughs> Um, I would like to say I completely confirming everything that Lizzie is saying because um, I remember specifically um, a large doctor's office that I went into and they um, I was speaking and I was talking I was showing and sampling and I presented them with their folders and they were looking through it and I said something about GCMS and they went he said just looked at me he goes they do GCMS and I said yeah he goes, we're in and that was what it took. He yeah. wanted to know those tests were performing. He said, we'll do two every oil kits. And literally it was like, he knew that's what he wanted to hear that confirmation of those tests that were performed. And so, yeah, it says a lot. And again, you don't have to completely know how to read it. Just provide them that information and give them that, those facts. And that's great. I love it. Lori, anything to add? Oh, well, I like the fact that you um, sit down with your people at their wellness overview and, and bring that up with them at the source to you site. I think that's a great idea um, to show them exactly their oil bottle and uh, what they actually have in their home. I think that's a great idea, and I, I think I'll have to use that. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Well, let's... Um, the, source to you, the source to you is such an added bonus for doTERRA. Mm -hmm. I think that just was like the seal of the deal. I mean, it was a seal of approval. Literally, it was just, it was such a great added touch for people to be able to now. And even there's that medical, um, isn't that, that's, there's, there's a medical professional area now on there yeah. that they can go to and actually get personal um, feedback from, I think it's Dr. Hill or somebody that they can actually, they actually get responded to. So I think that's huge um, asset to bring up to them is that there is that area um, that now they can have personal contact with doTERRA above us, a personal, you know, response. Absolutely. That's wonderful. That's a great resource. So thankful for this company. All right. So um, moving on, we're just briefly going to touch on oil composition and chemistry. Um, so I have to confess I'm a little bit of a chemistry nerd. I love organic chemistry, loved it in college, one of my favorite courses. Um, and so this may be something that um, healthcare professionals bring up to you. Um, and I want to assure you, you do not need to be an organic chemistry buff and explain to them um, all about the composition and the chemistry behind them. Um, so just a brief overview um, chemical framework and chemical constitutes can be a really incredibly challenging um, topic to explain but there are a lot of great resources and most healthcare professionals are researchers so if you give them a resource they're going to dig into it um, and one of the best ones i found is probably something that's already sitting at your house um, the essential life has a chapter in the back of it all about um, it's labeled supplemental, but it's all about the composition and chemistry of these um, organic substances. Um, so if you have somebody that is really wanting to know um, the specific compounds, you have a resource to turn them to there. So I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on that. I just want to point you towards that and say, don't feel like you have to know and understand all of it. I don't know and understand all of it. Um, but I love it. So there's a good resource for you there. Anything else, ladies? Um, I bring multiple Modern Essentials books. Um, that's the other thing. You, the Essential Life is great as well. But that's the other thing is I bring like five or six that I can pass around 
to the different doctors and nurses and people that are at the, at the class with me um, that they can actually be diving into and reading and looking up. And I can say, hey, check page 34. That's the chart for the reflexology or check this or 56. I can, I can literally just say spout some page numbers out and they can start looking and go, oh, okay, all right. And then there is a section on the constituents and such. And so I'll say, look here and then, and then look at each oil and each oil will tell you what constituent is in it and they go to frankincense and they'll see all of it listed like, oh, wow, okay. So that's the kind of thing um, that I like to do. I love having books on hand there so that they can already, and then again, they're going to buy them once you leave as well, so. Absolutely. That's a wonderful resource. Wonderful. Okay, um, so moving on to essential oil metabolism. Um, this is something that I frequently hear medical professionals kind of put the brakes on um, about in our modern medicine um, and in the world of um, drug dosing, a lot of the medications that people are on these days um, really have to build up high levels in our body to be effective. So one thing that I hear um, nurses and doctors kind of hesitate on is they want to know about the metabolism of these oils. They want to know what organs are affected and how long they linger in the system. Um, and this is just because of the way healthcare is right now. Um, there are some medications that you have to take for weeks and weeks before you're gonna get an effect. Um, and so that's what healthcare professionals know about. So this is a great place to start. Um, you probably already know this, but essential oils are mostly metabolized through the function of the liver. Um, the liver breaks down those chemical constitutes into metabolites, and then they're used throughout the body again and then excreted. Um, after they're, me they're metabolized by the liver, they're eliminated through the kidneys or lungs, so through our respiratory system or um, through our dentro-urinary system. Um, when essential oils are applied, they can be absorbed very quickly um, and begin to service the body within minutes. Um, they're also quickly metabolized and eliminated, um, only staying within the body uh, for a couple hours, and that's maximum. A lot of them are eliminated even more quickly than that. Um, so below, there are a couple resource sites. Um, there's a couple on doTERRA's site about safety and physiology with um, essential oil metabolism. Um, the link below that is another uh, resource about metabolism of oils. And then in the modern essential books in the science um, section, there's an awesome reference about um, the physiology behind our liver and then our kidneys and lungs and how we excrete the oils. Um, so that's something that I frequently turn people to. Um, so yeah, that's essential oil metabolism. Ladies, anything to add? I don't want to be the only one talking. Well, Lori, I think that. <laughs> Lori oh, I don't know what you need to. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, I, I haven't really probably dealt with the medical community as much as you guys have, but I have had nurses at classes of mine, and you can tell that they just have this wall that's completely up. Um, and I had one nurse, and I could just tell she was not taking in anything I was saying um, when we were talking about topical application. She just could not understand how putting an oil on your skin could possibly work. So, of course, I pulled out the nitroglycerin card, and I said, what happens when you put nitro paste on your skin? And she said, say no more. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> um, but I think it's hard sometimes, um, and I was that nurse years ago, that, you know, I would have had that wall up and didn't want to listen to anything you had to say. So you got to kind of have those things that can kind of bring their mind um, to be able to listen to you. And, um, you know, even me being a nurse, that wasn't enough for her. So I had to have something that I could pull out. And when I pulled that out, and I've done that a couple of times, um, they all of a sudden were understanding, you know. So I, I think they need to realize that, you know, medications work in the same way as far as, you know, applications. So we need to kind of mimic that and let them know that. Yeah, I think that's a perfect example. And I've used progesterone creams. I mean, same thing. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, 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 then you have to speak their language in a sense, not necessarily get scientific on their stuff, but you have to just have a few, you know, cards in the back that you're going to pull out or say that can just kind of relate. But I think again, that last, um, that last link there, um, about the modern essentials book. Um, I think that's, again, I have those modern essentials books there and I say, let's talk about application and we go to that section um, and we will talk exactly just like that. We'll talk about how within you know, 30 seconds it's absorbing the skin, da, 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 da. We go into that whole thing with Modern Essentials leading the way. Yes, I already know it, but they're reading it and listening to me. So I think that's very, um, that's a big deal. And understanding that some, you know, it does go through the liver, they need to see that, they need to understand that. Um, so yeah, I think that's a great um, point. Wonderful. Okay, so moving on to essential oil dosing. This is another red flag area that I hear health pro professionals um, talk about. So dosing is a huge thing in modern medicine, um, and it can be a dangerous thing if you don't take medicines prescribed by a doctor in the way that they're prescribed. So this is something that I hear people often say, well, I'm not comfortable with dosing. I don't know how to use these. Um, so this is a wonderful resource. This is from Dr. Hill. He um, published it in 2015, um, released this information at convention. Um, and this is on the doTERRA science blog. But it talks about um, ideal amounts and then your 24-hour maximum dosing for these areas. So these are recommendations by Dr. Hill. Um, so if we start at the top, you can see there is adult and child. So there's different recommendations for each, the adult and child. Um, and then aromatic doesn't have anything listed. Um, so aromatic is, um, is a great way to be able to affect, we know this obviously, our respiratory system, our immune function, um, or the environment and our emotion. Um, and with aromatic usage, um, often what's recommended is that you kind of titrate for effect. So there's not really a maximum um, dose or uh, ideal amount. Um, the ideal amount that you use as far as drops in your diffuser kind of depends on what your diffuser is. Um, so as far as aromatic, there isn't anything listed, but the internal, oral, and dermal are um, the ideal amount. It says how many drops are recommended. Um, and that's in about a four to six hour period. So internally, ideal amount for adults is two to four drops in about four to six hours with a 24 hour max of somewhere between 12 and 24. Um, and you can see the same thing for children, it's just a little bit less. We all know that um, essential oils are incredibly potent. Um, that they're highly concentrated. So obviously a smaller child would need a little less um, to affect their body and to elicit a response than an adult would. Um, so this is a great resource. I send this all the time um, to a lot of my friends who have little kiddos um, because especially moms are concerned about this. So this is a really good resource. It's from the doTERRA science blog. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, essential oil dosing. Can you, mm -hmm. um, get a little specific with the difference for people between the internal and the oral? Absolutely. Um, okay. So oral and internal, the difference is, um, taking them in like drinking in water and put, or putting in a capsule and getting it down into your belly versus putting a couple of drops underneath your tongue. So that's the difference between internal and oral. Um, so it would be the same way if you had a medication that you swallowed, that would be internal versus oral would be like a sublingual medication. So something you put under your tongue and let it absorb. Um, and the difference is the way it's absorbed, the quickness of absorption um, and how fast it works. So with oral or with putting it underneath your tongue, you need a little less. Um, than if you were taking it internally. Doesn't that also, um, the oral also does not, it talks a little bit about this in the Modern Essentials, how it does not 
um, pass through the second metabolism, I believe, of the liver. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I've read. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, because I think some people, I've, I have that question a lot um, with um, the medical professional is, explain to me now how sublingual, and I, again, I draw back to theirs, um, with, you know, vitamin B and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of a question I've gotten between internal and oral. So I wanted to make sure that everyone kind of understands that as well. Awesome. Anything else to add? All right. Well, we will move on. Um, the next topic is the science of emotional aromatherapy. Um, so medical professionals um, can often easily understand how a chemical structure or chemical constitute affects their body. So if you tell them the chemical constitute of frankincense, they can understand it would be the same as if you took a pill like this and it would affect your body. So the physiological response of an oil on the body is sometimes an easy thing to understand. Um, the area that I get the most pushback when I'm educating and um, sharing oils is with the science of aromatherapy. Um, so a lot of people will say, sure, they work on my body, but I don't believe that they can affect emotions. Um, so I want to tell you just a little bit about the pathway as far as the physiologic pathway and the reason that these oils actually do work on our brain and work on our emotions in such a strong way. Um, okay, so over here on the right, we're going to talk through the sensory pathway with um, smelling. So in our nasal cavity, our olfactory sensors, this is what intakes the smell. So it helps you to receive the smell of either a wonderful rose oil or skunk. Um, so you have these uh, sen olfactory sensors in your nasal cavity, um, and they take in that smell. When the olfactory sensors take it in, they convey it to our olfactory nerve, which is one of our cranial nerves. Um, from the olfactory nerve, the smell is transported to your limbic system. Um, and your limbic system is a portion of your brain responsible for emotional processing and our formation of memories. So when we're talking about essential oils either being diffused or using them aromatically, you're taking that smell and you are directly transporting it to the part of your brain that helps you deal with emotions, that helps us store memories, that helps us process memories. Um, so this is one of the um, ways that I love to share with healthcare professionals that these there is a lot of science behind emotions being affected by aromatherapy. Um, this picture came from um, an article online on doTERRA about emotional aromatherapy. I just thought it was a great representation at the bottom of um, our different um, uh, emotional oils. Okay, so here are some articles um, about the science behind emotional therapy, aromatherapy. Um, one from doTERRA's blog, um, real brief and basic overview is the first one, and then the second one talks about the actual chemistry and blends in the emotional aromatherapy line. Um, so this is something that I love to pull out, um, especially when I'm, you know, a month or two into um, a healthcare professional's oil usage path. Um, I love to pull out and bring my emotional aromatherapy line and pull out this article and say, you know, let's talk a little bit about this chemistry and why it affects our body. And we smell the oils and we look at the wheel and we talk about the physiologic process. Of, um, that our body does when we smell something. So there are a couple resources for y'all. Lori or Suzanne, anything to add? Well, the one thing I like to add is um, I have people uh, on my team who actually do not have a sense of smell, um, but the oils still affect them in the same way. So uh, people need to realize that just because you don't actually smell that oil, that it's still affecting that part of your brain. So I think that's important to pass along. Absolutely, yes, very important. 
Yeah, that's a great point to do. I and mean, sometimes that it can even enhance the smell to come and return. So I think that's a great point. Um, and then of course, again, I always throw the Modern Essentials has that section all on, you know, aromatherapy. So as you're talking about it, have them flip to that section um, and go through all of these points. Everything that she said is there and it's listed right there for you, making it just one step easier. So as you're reading, let that be your guide and they're looking at it at the same time that you are. So I think that's, um, that's another good resource. Absolutely. All right. Um, so I wanted to finish up this portion, portion of the presentation um, by sharing with you a couple answers that I got from uh, the doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners um, that have signed up and are now using oils. Um, so I asked them very simply, why did you start using doTERRA as essential oils? Um, and these were the three biggest answers I got. Um, one of them was hearing about how doTERRA is different in the way they produce oils. Um, so just what Suzanne was talking about in um, the way you present the information of the research that doTERRA is doing, the testing behind the quality of the oils that um, they're providing us with. Um, the doTERRA difference is huge. It's huge. Um, and Healthcare professionals want to know the quality of what they're using. So this was a big one. Um, and you are doing that. Uh, doTERRA is different. And you're highlighting these ways. So keep it up. Um, the second one that I heard was that um, the reason they started using doTERRA was the global reach, the co-impact sourcing, and humanitarian aid. Um, and this is a big thing that I see across the board. Healthcare professionals are not. Um, there's something in our hearts that wants to be involved in something bigger. And doTERRA does something bigger. Um, they are something bigger. And so continue to share about the co-impact sourcing. Continue to share about where our oils are sourced from. This is so unique and individual. Um, and then tell about these amazing things that doTERRA wellness advocates are doing, that doTERRA is doing to um, help the world. Um, and then the last one and the one I got almost every single time was the wellness, who, the wellness advocate who signed me up was somebody that I trusted. Um, so these relationships that you're forming, um, they mean more than you know. Um, and just like these ladies have said, um, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to have resources and be honest and share what you know. And you know about these essential oils. So. Um, Keep it up, keep sharing, and um, I hope this helped you a little bit. On this last page, I just have a couple of references. Um, the doTERRA site, the Modern Essentials, and the Essential Life. Um, I will say that most of the team members on my team who are healthcare professionals tend to like the Modern Essentials book a little bit better than the Essential Life. Um, the Modern Essentials just has a little more science in it. Um, it's a little less basic. Um, the Essential Life is obviously an incredible book, um, and it's got some great practical ways to inc incorporate oil usage into your life. Um, but I will just say that I tend to see people like the Modern Essentials a lot more. Um, and then obviously doTERRA.com has the science blog. Um, it has the partnerships um, with other medical professionals. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Suzanne is going to um, share a little bit more about that in just a minute. So um, I hope that was something that helped you all. Um, ladies, any last thoughts to add? Suzanne, I know you're going to share some with us. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So Suzanne, if you want to um, go ahead and share with us. All right. <laughs> see here. All right. So I'm going to share just a few of um, the documents and such that I print um, in for the folders. So I create 
a folder that's going to be um, given to each doctor or nurse, whoever's going to be in the room with me as I'm presenting. And, um, and I wish I had some of the pictures that I did. So I took a, one of them, I took a few pictures, but anyways, I'll show you the actual um, documents. And then Crystal is going to, um, I think she's gonna load those um, onto the files for everyone as well. Yes, I can do that. Okay, great. Okay, so here we go. This is the first one. <clears throat> this is the, can you all see this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the, um, the brochure. This was put out long time ago and I honestly, I don't know if it's still even out um, in rotation, but it pretty much goes through um, every bit of how doTERRA tests um, all of their, um, their testing that are performed, the G, obviously the GCMS, um, just some very different things about doTERRA and just some really great points. So I love this one and I just print this and I have this in a little folder for them. Um, the next one that I do is the testing um, and that is this one here. If you can see that, that's good. You guys see that one? Okay, um, so obviously this is just a basic one. This has been out for many years as well. So this is just, um, you know, the basic five levels. Obviously they do more if needed, but these are the base fi basic five is how I explain it. Um, and then we go through, I just have this again in their folders and I just kind of touch on this. I don't have to be a scientist to really explain that what this is, but I just give this to them because they, they know when they see this stuff that obviously there's something behind this company. If they're putting that kind of dollars into their testing. Um, okay, the next one is going to be the Vanderbilt rollout process. Now, I got a little bit um, in more involved in this one just because this is um, in my, where I live. You know, I'm in, in Nashville area, so um, a lot of the people that I speak to know about Vanderbilt, so this one just came. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so this was their standard rollout process on how essential oils were brought into Vanderbilt Hospital. Um, and again, this is just ancillary items. This doesn't mean this gets you in any further than anything else would. This is just something that to me, um, I, I wanted to hit it home because again, we're close to it. But again, it's, if you're in a hospital setting or a doctor setting, this is just a great, um, I know another thing to add, but again, this would, talks about basically everything here, um, you know, that they explained to Vanderbilt and it was um, Dr. Hill who was involved in this, um, getting this into this hospital. And literally it just goes and goes and goes. So that again, that one will be um, in the files as well. And then this is available on, um, on the Aroma Tools website. And these are tear sheets. So it's about 50 to a, you know, to a set. And um, it's just the wellness in the workplace. And again, we just kind of talk about um, how other people are using them. Do you want to diffuse in your office or in your in your medical setting? Um, you know, and it, again, it just gives you a few different things to talk with them. And on the back, there's a backside as well um, that goes into a little bit more. But so this is just a great form. And I give, again, I give them each one of these. Um, so those are the four basics. If it's a, um, a pediatrics office, I'll put in a few things about essential oils with kids. If it's um, you know, an ENT, I'll put in a few things about the respiratory. If it's, you know, it just depends. I kind of, I try to cater. And again, Aroma Tools, awesome amount of information with those tear sheets that you can just tear off and put in there with them. So I do try to cater to them at their um, level, whatever it is that they're um, you know, doing in their practice. Um, so in my, go ahead. Did you have something you're there? Oh no, just go ahead. I was going to say that it was great for people to see, but go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, let me see what else. Okay. Um, I did have a image, but I guess it probably doesn't really matter. Let me see if I can find that for you. Um, but I actually, you know what, forget it. It's on the group. Oh, in the Facebook group. Okay. Yes. It's a, it was showing just a the folders. Yes, of the folders okay. and how they look. And it just is just a little added touch, a little professionalism with it. And yeah. then walk in with, with the books. I'm telling you, walk in with plenty of Modern Essentials books because they'll probably buy you out. And then again, that gives you an awesome 
just not just you talking, but they're seeing it and reading it. It's in print. Um, and what I'm saying is confirming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't, um, I know that, I don't remember if we mentioned this with source to you, that the source to you.com forward slash healthcare is yes. somewhere that's great resource. And also just the healthcare at doTERRA.com email. So getting people more involved um, in that way. But I will find that picture that you posted of the folder in the business group. I was trying to do a quick search um, and I'll just do it when we're finished with the recording and we'll load that along with the files that you showed. I think it's important for people to realize how easy that is. You've got these great resources and they do have a different level of professionalism and data in them. You don't have to read them word for word. You don't have to know how to pronounce all the words, but just the fact that they can look at that in front of them and see there's real data to back this up. And then um, I mentioned too that we have 113 so far relationships with uh, medical profession professionals or facilities, um, hospital relationships primarily that doTERRA works with directly. Um, and that speaks a lot to people. So the source to you is like Susanna said, a fabulous resource. They've added some great information on there. Make sure you're really familiar with it. We just did in my usage group, a whole week's worth of education on that. So I know that a lot of people learned quite a bit and I did have a lot of comments, people saying I had no idea that we had 113 relationships with different uh, medical professionals that are using doTERRA regularly. And that's going to grow. I think that number could easily be doubled and tripled, you know, possibly even by convention because they did launch out the source to you connection for medical professionals and encouraged us to share that with those people in our lives. So I just encourage you with this information to go forward confidently knowing you do have the resources you need. You have the knowledge that you need. I love that Susanna said that a couple of times. Share what you know. It doesn't mean that you have to know all of their jargon and what they went to school for four or eight years or whatever to learn. They don't expect you to know that. Um, but a lot of times, like Lori said, there will be some who have that block and that mental just wall up against you that, well, this is natural and we don't believe in that stuff. But I'm finding more and more people are open to it because of the testimonials, the people in their lives that they've seen um, have real lasting results. And just because it's flooding really into our culture where more people are turning to natural solutions. So I find that a lot of times the medical professionals at my classes are on the edge of their seats. They already know that chemicals produce real actions and that these are chemicals um, and the constituents in them are, you know, once you mention that they are the same or similar a lot of times as to what you will see uh, try, that they try to reproduce synthetically and pharmaceutically. And so they get that little bit of information and they get excited and they want to learn more. And sometimes they're the most engaged people at the classes and just think someone was the person who introduced oils to Lizzie, Susanna, and Lori. And um, in all but one case, just Lori's, um, they were not medical professionals who introduced them. So just keep that in mind. It was a friend, um, someone that they trusted who introduced them, and they took their level of knowledge and learning farther because they were already natural researchers. So um, anything else to add to how you share or just anything that you want to wrap up with? Any three of you? Uh, I'll say something real sure. quick. Um, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm talking too much. But, um, okay. Um, I, for me, if, and, if, and if this might work for you as well, but um, in the beginning, I was more um, comfortable going into a DO or a chiropractor, someone who had that, they're right on the verge of maybe I could be a little more natural than a regular old MD. So I would, I, I recommend if you are just starting out and you feel, feel like um, it's a little bit too overwhelming still to talk to someone who has an MD or whatever, go to a chiropractor or find a holistic practitioner or a naturopath doctor like myself, because we want to hear about things like that. There are so many of them around. You just have to look them up a little bit more than you would an MD, but go to someone that is more prone to having that common ground with you and, um, and approach them that way. Cause at least you will have that, 
Um, you know, again, that common ground where they go, oh yeah, I, I am more natural. Um, so go to a DO, go to a chiropractor, a DC, or someone like that, um, that you can feel a little bit more comfortable and before you go into an actual huge practice. Um, you know, like I said, but, um, for me personally, if now that I am since December, I have my own office and I'm in the, totally in the practice, if someone were to come to me, I know what I'd be looking for. I mean, I, I'm probably would set the bar a little higher, but I know what I'd be looking for. Like I'm having people approach me and say, Hey, would you, do you want to carry my products in your office? And I'm like, well, let me just look at them a little, but I know now what I would want. And it would be what we're talking about today. Everything that we've said, everything that lives on the PowerPoint that Lizzie created, everything, that kind of stuff is what I, I would want to be presented to me to plead their case. So I could say, yeah, that, that does look legit. It does look like they've clearly got their ducks in a row. Great testing. Um, you've got great marketing. You've got books to you know provide me for education for my patients because they're going to have questions and I don't want to get, I don't, I don't need to be trained in this. I'm already trained. That kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like just having that, that source to you and that place that I can just direct my patients now to go to, it's perfect. Awesome. Um, oh, there you yeah, while you were sharing that, I went ahead and found this really quick. So these are the folders that Susanna shared the pictures of that she takes in and it does just add that little bit of professionalism. It's not a lot of work to put these together, just have them ready well in advance. So if you, at the last minute, maybe you have your regular dental cleaning checkup and you strike up a conversation with the hygienist and before you know it, you've got an appointment to come in and share on their lunch break. Um, don't be you know, intimidated by, oh my goodness, I have to get all this stuff together. Or just like for classes, I like to have the materials ready to go so that I can feel confident planning it last minute or the next day or, or whatever works for them. Um, but this is, this is what they look like. This is what Susanna takes in each um, doctor and he, or meeting she had and received. This was a pediatrics um, okay. office, so you can see I do the child care up the top. Um, I have one that's just specific for chiropractors. And again, these are all aroma tools, um, but they have one that's just for chiropractors and it's a full um, brochure type thing for them. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it takes a few minutes of your time to prepare these, but it's well worth it. Yes, absolutely. And do you take, Susanna, you take this when you're going to actually sit down and talk to them. You don't, I'm wondering how you get your actual like appointment with them. So I cold it's call off sometimes oh. I'll cold call and I'll walk in and I'll have some, a specific folder for that. It'll be um, not, a, not as in, you know, all of this, but it will have, um, um, the, the testing methods that will have just some information, you know, just minor things that I'll drop off wellness in the workplace, stuff like that, or whatever caters to their practice. Um, and that'll be a cold call with my, my, my card. Um, and then I'll follow up again if I don't hear back from it, or I will have an in with somebody that I know knows somebody and I'll contact them that way and say, let's set up a lunch and learn. Um, and I'll provide some light food or whatever. And, um, and then do it that way. This actual um, pediatrics office, I trained them for months on end. I would go in once a month and train the staff because they were actually going to use it in their, in their facility. And they were diffusing and everything. Um, so I would go in monthly and just train them and just do different aspects of essential oils. Topical application was one. Then ar aromatic would be another. Um, you know, children's health and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And then how also, uh, my, my chiropractor is interested in possibly, you know, having some options for his patients. But like you said, I don't think that he wants to take care of educating them. And so how do you set that up with the doctor that you're dealing with? So a chiropractor, I have a chiropractor as well. And I, t I taught classes there and he would offer that to his patients. So I would go there and teach classes. Okay. Um, and so or he would have my cards there to hand to his patients. Um, he would have like deep blue samples or I would provide him with some stuff. He'd have a, a few um, intro kits, um, lemon lavender peppermint, that kind of thing. He'd have some of that on hand and then he'd have my card or whatever. And then of course, if he wanted to do it as a business, then you would just shuffle his people under him. If not, most of them don't, but some of them do. Um, okay would just shuffle them under but you know otherwise they would just come directly to to me or whoever 
Yeah, and okay. we have a, a very successful chiropractor who's a diamond um, on our team, Tracy Smith, and I introduced her, and um, she really gets inundated with that type of thing. So just keep that in mind that they have people calling on them and showing up trying to sell them things all the time or trying to get them to sell things. Um, so, you know, just be careful in your approach that you're not coming across in that salesy way and, and have some of this education with you that really speaks volumes, the testing, like Susanna said, she knows what she's looking for. She's not close minded to offering other supplements, but she knows what she's looking for in quality and testing and results and things. Um, and with Tracy, she's actually not allowed. A lot of people assume she's built her business through her practice. She's not allowed to do that. She's an employee. She does not own her own practice and her boss does not allow her to do that. But the way that I got in in the front door that way was they have a monthly mom's group that meets there that she leads. And I just said, I would love to come talk about essential oils to your mom's group if you think they'd be interested. So she checked with them and all of them were interested and said, yes, let's make that our topic for next month. Um, and at that time I had um, Lacey Grimm come in and teach that as well. Um, and I was just there helping facilitate. So we, we did that together and that was kind of how we introduced it. And some people signed up, but Tracy herself was still not interested in signing up, getting the oils for herself. And she just kind of saw it as something, oh, that's great. Some of the moms in my mom's group can benefit from it. So it took more time of just through the relationship, um, talking with her and following up and making sure that she knew how to um, use the oils that she did get finally. And it took several months before she decided to start um, pursuing anything further with it. So just be patient um, in those relationships. It could be really quick sometimes and other times it might take months of follow-up and continued education. And if they're not open to it, offer at least to educate their staff, um, other people in their lives, their patients, whoever is open to learning about it. Yeah. And like she said, don't expect them to do your legwork at all. Like I, I make that very clear that I am available and I can come in, you can hand them my card with the sample or what, what not make sure that that's set in stone so they don't think they have to now be like, okay, what, I have to learn all this now. No, just make that part definite. Yeah. And they may be um, willing to learn the business side of it and want to do that uh, as they see that people are responding um, and be prepared to offer that option, but let them know that they do not have to, like she said, learn that all up front just to um, expect that you will come and do the educating for them. And if they at some point decide they want to shift that into a business for themselves on the side, a lot of these people, um, you know, especially I know chiropractors really are open to having another separate business on the side along with what they're doing and, and other doctors as well. And then some see it as a conflict of interest, or if they're working with a large medical organization or group, they're maybe not allowed. So again, don't make assumptions, ask questions, get to know their specific situation and see what will be the best fit. Okay, awesome information. I think this is going to be so well received. I'm really excited about it myself and I so appreciate each of you just taking the time to share and Lizzie for your um, input and your time spent on the presentation itself. We are so grateful. So thank you all. I know there will be a lot of questions and feedback and I look forward to um, being a part of the ongoing conversation with all of you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. It was a fun morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.